Hi, I'm Todd Sutton, The Waste Loop. In July of 2014, I investigated how foam polystyrene gets recycled. During my investigation, I discovered that a new facility in Indianapolis, Indiana was being constructed that can handle different types of foam and polystyrene. I'm here today at that facility to investigate how they recycle that material and what they turn it into. Let's go check it out. So Brandon, we're in your storage warehouse here. I see thousands of bales here. Tell me about some of the bales. Todd, here's an example of some densified blocks of EPS that we get from different suppliers. Okay, interesting, kind of a large block. I've seen some smaller ones. Yep. And here's another example of material we get from uh, the single stream MRF in Los Angeles. This came across uh, Intermodal, which is the truck and train. Since we're so centrally located, we take stuff from all across the U.S. Uh, from Florida to California to Atlanta and as far away as Canada. Really? Impressive. Okay. All right, Todd, here we have an example of uh, dirty styrene from Murph in Canada. Okay, so you mentioned dirty. I've seen a few bales so far. The, the dirt is not an issue. No, not one bit. And that's exactly why we built this facility to deal with contaminated styrene with dirt and food contamination and everything else. The food contamination is not a problem. Nope. This bale is actually from the city of New York. I'm noticing that there's both what we call the expanded polystyrene mm -hmm. and rigid polystyrene blended in the same bale. What's going on here? Uh, we found the key to do this efficiently is to combine the two, to combine rigid and foam so we can get weight on the trucks. So these bales on average weigh between 900 to 1,200 pounds, which is solving a transportation issue. So we can get 40,000 pounds on a truckload. So Todd, we showed you all the examples of different dirty polystyrene bales we're going to be processing over in the other area. And now we're going to walk you through from start to end on how we clean those bales and make them into usable products. So Alex, this dirty bale, what's going to happen to it from this point forward? So Todd, we've got to get this bale broken into all of its individual pieces. So we're going to feed it up this conveyor and into this machine called a trommel that allows it to ride up the side and drop down and break it apart into many pieces. From the time we start here at a full bale to the time we get all the way through the process to a clean product, it takes about half an hour. So 30 minutes from dirty bale to clean product. That's correct. Let's go. So from here, we're purifying the polystyrene. What you're hearing are the air jets. We're positively sorting out all of the polystyrene from anything that may not be polystyrene okay. by optically sorting it. So that light shines on all of the plastic and it senses what type of material each individual piece is. And then it directs it to either kick it out or kick it down into a separate stream. So from here, we're going through the grinder and then it's on to the wash system. So Todd, we've taken that ground up material and loaded it into these tanks, which are called attrition washers. And what we have on this shaft here spinning is a propeller at the top and a propeller at the bottom that have opposite pitches, so you get competing counter currents. So it's a super washing machine. Super washing machine. So then right here behind us, we have our clean water high-speed rinse machine. And that's okay. always using clean water to make sure we get any remainder of that dirty water off of the flake. And then from the rinse station, I see this interesting machine here, I guess. Yes. What is that? This is our sink float tank, where the rigid material will sink to the bottom and the foam will float on top. And so why are you doing that at this stage in the game? Yeah. The, the, the two different types of polystyrene have a little bit different properties. So when we dry this material and take it to our extrusion process to pelletize it, we can treat it just a little bit differently to make sure we process it properly. So Todd, if we stop here, this is the material we were just running. This is what floated on the top. This is what sank to the bottom. So now we have our good, clean, dry material. We're ready to go to the extruder. So Alex, we just left the area where the clean flake is being prepared for reuse or recycling. What happens with that flake now? So we'll load it into the extruder where it'll get melted down and become a viscous Play-Doh-like material. It'll come through here to our Etlinger continuous screen changer that can have up to 150 micron screen in it to catch all of the smallest possible contamination before it's cut into pellets, dropped into cold water to harden and becomes a finished product. And then that pellet can be used to make new products anywhere. Okay, excellent. So Alex, these are the pellets we saw being manufactured in a super set. Exactly. I can get these in any color as long as it's black, is that right? 
We've actually made them in many different colors, white, gray, green, whatever color you want, true. Okay. So from here, how do these little pellets get used to recycle in a new product? The pellets are fed down into the extruder and they go through a specialized dye phase that's a little bit different than the type we use to make the pellets that creates the core shape. And at the end of the line, we cut it into these three foot parent lengths. Then these parent lengths are taken to a precision cutting saw that cuts it down to the final core with a clean edge. Cores for what? Yeah. So these will go to the paper industry and have paper wound on them for credit card receipt, cash register rolls, really any kind of application you can think of that'll have paper wound onto a roll. We have eight production lines and two saw lines. And are these running all day long? How 24 often? hours a day, five days a week. Your feedstock, it's all 100% recycled? This is all from recycled feedstock we generate at Plastic and Recycling. So with that level of production, do you have enough supply feedstock for your, for your lines? We're always looking for more. Always okay. looking for more. Wow, that was a really interesting investigation. So I've seen dirty bales of polystyrene from single string programs from places like California and New York, cleaned and turned into flake or resin products. Aside from this tube, what other products can be made from these resin pellets? Well, we sell our pellets to customers like Rubbermaid to make letter trays, 3M to make scotch tape dispensers, uh, into picture frames, crown molding. And of course, the core for this paper roll. Impressive. So I call this another successful investigation by Todd Sutton, The Waste Sleuth.